Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my bread recipe again. If you watched um, the last Make It Homemade video, I shared my homemade loaf bread and I also shared how I made crock pot apple butter. I will have that video linked down below in case you missed the apple butter. But when I started filming this portion for this next video, I wanted to still keep that bread recipe in this one because in case you're new here and this is the fir your first time watching, when I share the rolls and I share the garlic knots, you're not gonna know that base recipe. So if you religiously watch my channel, um, you are gonna be seeing that bread recipe again, but we're gonna turn that same br bread recipe into some delicious rolls and into some garlic knots. I've got everything sitting out here to make my milk and honey bread. Don't forget, I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys. I've been making this for a few years now and it is so, so good. I'm so happy that I finally created a bread recipe that is delicious. So let me show you how I put it together. I have shared this a couple times on my channel, but it has been a while and since I have revised it and it kind of made some changes. So I am making mine in my bread machine. That's how I make all my bread. It's super, super easy. If you've never thought about getting a bread machine, I highly recommend. You can normally get them on Amazon. I'll have one linked in my storefront for you guys if you're interested. Let me show you how to put this together. You're gonna need some water, some salt, some all-purpose flour. You're gonna need some honey. Um, my yeast, I buy mine from Sam's Club in bulk and I just um, keep what's not open in the freezer. And then what is open, I keep in mason jars in the fridge and it lasts forever, pretty much. <laughs> you also need some sugar, you need some milk, and you need some butter. So let me get it all set up and we'll mix it together. So before we get everything mixed in the bread machine, we've got to activate our yeast. So we're gonna take and add our water. Our milk. Now I'm adding in hot water because you want your um, this liquid mixture to add in your yeast and your sugar for it to bloom. You want it to be at least anywhere from 110 to 120. No more than 120 because it will kill your yeast. Um, so as you see, I'm still under 100. So I'm gonna take and pop mine in the microwave for a couple seconds just to heat it up. Like I said, anywhere from 110 to 120. Okay, it is at 115. So now we're gonna add in our sugar. The sugar is what's gonna help activate your yeast and help it blend. It has to have some sort of a sweetness to feed it. And then we're gonna add in our yeast. If you are using packets of yeast um, instead of like, you know, these, <laughs> then it's gonna be two packets of yeast. And give it a stir. And then we're going to set a timer for 10 minutes and let it bloom. While that is back there blooming, and it's already started, I am going to go ahead and add in half of my flour to the bottom of my mixer, or yeah, it mixes it. <laughs> my bread machine, I'm gonna add half. And then I'm gonna add in um, either melted and cooled butter or softened butter. Add that in there. Then we're gonna add in our honey. So 
makes a world of difference, y'all. It is so good. And that's what gives it its name, milk and honey bread. <laughs> that in there and so this is good to go whenever this is done when the timer goes off we will add it in and then we will top with the rest of our flour and our salt you don't want to put the salt in with the yeast because it could kill it okay we got that in there still our yeast is ready to go so we're gonna dump this mixture in it got all bubbly and delicious and then we're just gonna add the remaining of the flour on top and our salt and I like to try to add the flour where it coats the top and doesn't have the yeast coming through so that way I can add the salt and it not like I said, it not kill the yeast. Okay, I got it in there. Excuse the messiness, y'all. It's well used, like I said. So mine has several different options. I know it's hard to see, it's dark in here, but there's several different options. So for me, I personally like to do the dough in here and then I bake it in the oven because you get full loaves. So I like to set mine on eight because that's the dough setting. So we're gonna get it going and then I'll come back when it's time to take it out and form our loaf. My timer just went off for my bread. It is ready to go. So I have got my Wilton loaf pan. This is the long sandwich loaf. This is the one I prefer to use, but if you don't have it, this does make two like regular smaller loaves. Well, I really like making it in this. I will have a, um, a link for this in my Amazon storefront if you're interested. I highly recommend, I love. They do come in a two pack, so you get two of these. So I've already greased it. We're gonna get a little bit of flour out and then we're gonna roll it up and get it in there. Um, whenever you put it in here, you're gonna cover it with a clean towel, dish towel, and just push it to the side and let it sit and let it about double into size. I'm gonna time it for you guys because I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but I am gonna time it this time so that way I can kind of give you an idea. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of flour down. I'll just clean my counter, dry it off. Just wash my hands. You don't need much, just a little bit. And then we're gonna add it in here. So it's just a little bit sticky. You get a little bit of flour on there. You don't want too much. Cause it'll make your make your dough dense so what i like to do is just kind of press it out a little bit and then what you're going to do is you're going to start, go from one end start pulling and rolling and that's going to shape your now with doing it in the bread machine it's already went through the whole kneading cycle and all the first rise and all that so for me i don't have to worry about kneading it and everything so the process for me pulling it out of the bread machine i'm just taking rolling it up put it in we're going to put it in here and then we're going to cover it with a towel and let it sit until it doubles in size so got it rolled out now make sure when you're putting it in your pan to put it seam side down because there is going to be a seam there and then i like to fold my, my ends in because there's also a seam there and then get it put in the pan 
Then we're gonna get us a clean towel. Make sure it's a clean one. Don't use a dirty one, that's gross. I'm just gonna cover it and let it sit. And like I said, I'm gonna time it for you guys this time because I'm not sure how long it normally takes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. That's how long it ended up taking. And it is ready to go in the oven. I have my oven preheated at 375. I preheated it whenever it started um, rising up. So that way it's nice and warm and ready to go. Let's get it put in the oven. It is done. Oh, it smells so good in here. There's nothing like some homemade bread. <laughs> the smell of homemade bread. So you want it to be anywhere from 190 to about 200 when it is ready to go. So it is 209, so it's ready to go. It ended up taking 35 minutes to bake, so at 375. So what I like to do is I'm going to take it out of this pan so that way it doesn't carry over cook because this is hot. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put a towel over it and as it cools, I've tested this before and when I don't cover it with a towel when it's hot, it dries out easier. So I've noticed that if I cover it with a towel and let it completely cool with the towel on it, it holds in the moisture and it makes it super, super soft bread. So let's cover it up. Well, let's take it out and get it covered. I have made another batch of the bread dough. Y'all just got done watching that. So we're gonna take that dough and make different recipes. That's what I'm gonna show you throughout this video. So now we're going to make some rolls. They're so good. So um, this is actually half of that recipe because I'm gonna save the other half for something else. But we're gonna make some rolls. I try not to add any flour unless needed which y'all watched that other one, you know, I just do a little bit on the counter, just enough to kind of roll it. So I'm gonna take, pinch it off. Just kind of use my fingers. And then twirl it, make sure it sticks together. And then you got a nice little circle. And then over here, I've got a greased pan here. And I'm just gonna add them in my little dough balls, but I just do it with my fingers. I just do the same thing. Kind of bring it all together. That's it. This is the same recipe, same exact recipe, same dough that I use for my loaf bread. And I love, that's one of the things I love about it is because I can change it up and make it different things. It's not too sweet where I can still do garlic knots, but then it's, it's like it's just sweet enough, you know, like I can do, um, I can use this for cinnamon rolls. I can do it for garlic knots, which y'all will see, and then just the regular rolls. And I did have somebody in the last, um, I don't remember. I think it was the last one where I shared just the loaf bread. They said, like, when you're using a bread machine, you know, you just dump and go. But my recipe, it has you, you know, bloom, activate the yeast, you know, you're blooming it and getting it started. I have tested this, and it, the dough is more dense. So if you just add everything in, if you follow my recipe, add everything in, the, the dough is not gonna be as fluffy and soft. But if you take and do like I do, exactly if you follow my recipe to a T, <laughs> like I showed it, then it's a lot fluffier and light, like it's, it's a lighter bread. So yeah, it's still gonna turn out if you just dump and go and add everything in. But like I said, if you follow the recipe like I show it, 
then it's just gonna make a nice light fluffy dough and a nice light fluffy bread or roll or you know whatever you're using so but I do test my recipes I don't just you know post them first time unless it's a really good one and it just works out but like bread and you know and stuff like that that's kind of more of a science and so I definitely tested out review recipes and everything for you know certain recipes so I have tested it it doesn't work out as good if you want a nice fluffy light dough follow my recipe to a T so we have got let's see six seven eight I got eight rolls here out of a half of a batch so I'm gonna take and cover them with a clean towel for about 20 to 30 minutes you just want them to double in size and then we will get them put in the oven I have just preheated my oven to 375 and I'm going to pop them in and let them cook about 18 to 20 minutes. You just want them to reach the internal temperature of anywhere from 190 to 200. And then you cannot skip this step y'all. It is so, so good. I love to top it right out of the oven with some nice salted butter. Oh, it's so, so good. Like I said, you cannot skip this step. <laughs> they are they are so good and your family is definitely going to be fighting over them we're going to do some garlic knots tonight to go with our lasagna so i'm going to show y'all how i put those together now this is the other half of the dough from where i did the rolls which y'all just got done watching that clip so i'm going to take the same dough recipe and we're going to make it into garlic knots. So I've got some minced garlic. If you don't have minced garlic, you can just use powdered. And then I've got some butter. I like using the salted, but you just use whatever you like. And then I'm going to use this Mr. Sticks Just Add Butter. This is the garlic and herb one. You can just use Italian seasoning if you want to. And then I've got some um, sprinkle parm is what we call it here. You can use regular um like i'm sorry max is throwing a fit <laughs> um you can use like regular shredded um either one works fine um this dough was refrigerated overnight so it's going to take a little bit longer for it to proof now if you make it as the dough itself and then turn it straight into garlic knots you're only going to need it you know, it's only going to need to do that final proof before you put it in the oven um, about 20 to 30 minutes just like the rolls but this is going to take me a little bit longer since it's cold dough but i'm going to show you how i do it and then we will get it baked in the oven and they're going to be so yummy i just cut the dough into some pieces and then i'm going to take and just roll it out and then just do a knot And then we're going to get it just put into our greased pan. And I'm just going to do that for all of these. And then we will put on our um, um, garlic and parmesan mixture on top. I've got them all knotted. I'm going to take and cover them with a clean towel and just let them sit over here until they about double in size and I'll keep a track of how long it took from this dough being in the fridge so that way you kind of have an idea um, because if you do this the same way and have cold dough that way you know how long it's going to take but like I said if you just do it straight out of the bread machine with my recipe then you only need to proof it for like 30 minutes okay so I didn't have the patience <laughs> So I ended up putting in this bottom oven here, I just put my pan in there with the towel and I turned it on the warm setting. And so that way it just gives it a little bit of heat 
to not cook the rolls, but it kind of helps them rise. Um, so right now it's been going about 40 minutes and they're about done. Here's what they look like now that they have proof. So putting them in the oven is just gonna kind of help speed that process up. Like I said, I only had it on the warm setting. So that way it just gave it a little bit of heat to help it rise since it was in the um, fridge before. So now that they're ready to go, I have got my stick of butter melted and I'm gonna go ahead and add in some minced garlic, some Parmesan and some of this garlic and herb seasoning to that. And then we're just gonna pour it all over these knots. I had to get out my brush so that way I could get all in the little crevices. You definitely don't want to miss a spot with some of that garlic butter. And then I've got my oven preheated at 375 and we're just going to get those in and cook them at least 18 to 20 minutes. Um, it's just going to depend on the size overall of your rolls and you just want to do the same thing. Check them with the thermometer and make sure they're anywhere from 190 to 200 that's where you know that the dough is done in the side and then i had some of the extra garlic butter and i just took and brushed them one more time when they came out of the oven here is what they look like when they were all done y'all these were so good this is definitely one of those ones that i wish i had done a full batch because everybody was fighting over them. They were delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave you some inspiration to get in your kitchen and make something from scratch. I love having one base recipe and being able to change it up and make different things with it to be able to feed my family. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.